please like our video and subscribe to Rotowire. Then go to rotowire.com slash pod for a free 10-day trial. Welcome back to the Rotowire Fantasy Baseball Podcast. Shohei Otani left his start yesterday against the Dodgers with a blister. Uh, you know, he's been throwing hard, Fred. He's been hitting bombs, but he's also giving up bombs. He's given up four homers this spring. He's walked 10 guys, struck out 17. So he's getting the case. He's throwing hard. Uh, he's He's been the FOMO guy this year. It, people have been like, oh, I, like Liss wrote in his article for the his third online championship team, the Beat Chris Liss League, that... He, did, he passed up on Jordan Alvarez, passed up on uh, Stanton or other DH types because he wanted Otani in a league. That's FOMO right there. That's I, I got to have Otani in a league. And I think he's probably the most FOMO'd guy this year because of what he's been doing this spring training. Maybe. I, he hasn't been for me. So no. so have you, have you drafted him anywhere? I don't have him anywhere. I regretfully didn't keep him in a keeper league when we had to make our decisions back in January and yet didn't okay. draft until March. But uh, don't get me started on that timing mechanism. <laughs> but at any rate, you know, I was like, oh, and he went for a lot more than I could have kept him for. Uh, Cause that was a, a daily moves league too, uh, where I had both sides right. of that coin. Okay. But you know, there, there's some things that are interesting about him. The fact that, you know, Joe Madden's been having him hit and pitch on the same day is pretty wild. Uh, yep. considering what the Otani rules were before. It looks like there's no Otani rules this year, but you're probably not going to have them in any teams. So I think I'm, this isn't going to be like your never Kapler. I'm going to be a never Otani and I'm going to stick with it. I think you can call <laughs> me on this for years. I don't think I'll ever, I think he will play his entire career. Uh, as long as he's a dual player, I think he'll play his entire career and I'll never roster him. Something that I feel like with Otani. So injuries are, probably the biggest reason that fantasy teams go south Mm -hmm. is just a run of injuries i mean that's it's a huge factor yeah with otani like with otani like it obviously is dependent on league format so a daily transaction league i'm more like i would be more likely to consider him i just don't play in a lot of those right um his injury potential is just so high compared to other players so if you compare him to other pitchers because we know how big pitcher injuries are he is going to have I don't know, 18 plate appearances in between every start. Yeah. So while the other pitchers are just chilling out, you know, putting gu- bubble gum on people's hats and things like that, he's going to have 18 plate appearances. He's going to run the bases a half a dozen times, to, like whether he gets to first or third or home or whatever. But there's so much injury potential in him being a position, well, a DH, but him being out there on those days when he's not, like there's just so much potential for him to turn an ankle and have the start push back or just so many things like that. And then obviously valuing him as a hitter, the fact that he pitches and that, like we've seen this before, he gets a pitching injury and then that sidelines him from hitting at least for some amount of time while they get the injury to calm down. I just think that he carries more injury risk than he doesn't carry more injury risk than Steven Strasburg, but but maybe everybody else. Like he carry, carries more injury risk than basically every pitcher. He also carries more injury risk than basically every hitter. I'm trying to avoid injuries if I can. I just don't think the juice is worth the squeeze there, especially with him starting basically only once a week. I'm just in a weekly transaction league. I just can't figure out why people are taking him in round 10 or 12 for one start a week with all that hitting in the middle that you can't use him for. Daily, totally different story. Weekly, I just yeah. think he's too risky. Well, and I was totally on board with that point of view last year uh, when you have to, you know, even in the NFBC, when you get the day before and the day after as no fly zones for after his before and after his starts, how do you then try to time, you know, try to get four games in a row, even even getting like the the Monday through Thursday, if he's a Sunday starter, because he's probably not going to play on Monday. And then all of a sudden it's three games and then maybe it's two. Maybe he has to sit against a lefty every once in a while. It's like, no. I'm not on board. With I know. That. I know. I, I think if I was going to draft him, it would be projecting him out as a hitter. And then if that mm-hmm. comes up, then I take him, but I, I, it doesn't come up to his ADP. You have to factor in some time, some breaks for him too. Even if, you know, they're like, Oh, we're going to play him more yeah. like as a DH than we ever have before. Well, that's fine. But like, let's see by June, if he's starting to look tired or something like that. I don't know. I just, the, to me, the injury potential is just so high that until I see him do it, I don't think I can believe in it. And even after I see him do it, I don't know if I'll believe he could do it again. Yeah. If he ever ha- if he ever has a year where he- but okay, beyond fantasy, remarkable player, remarkable story. His ability right. to hit and pitch at a major league level is incredible. He just doesn't fit our fan our weekly fantasy game 
perfectly, especially when they're using a six man rotation, which not many teams went to this year. Some did, but not as many as I think some of us expected. So for now, so that put, for now. Yeah. So, so I mean, some will later in the year, some of the also ran teams or whatever, but um, yeah. Anyways, I, I'm just a never Otani guy, happy to watch him play, but I don't trust him. There will be weeks this year where he's scheduled to start on like a Saturday and something happens with that six man rotation. He just never starts. Yeah. They get a rain out, they get a rain out and they push him back further. Cause then, because if they push him back, that's okay. They can still just keep using him as a hitter while he's pushed back and right. can give them value. So there will be weeks I think where he's scheduled. If he's scheduled to start late in the week, I'm going to use him very nervously. He again, roll an ankle, running the bases. And all of a sudden he gets pushed back four days and you got a zero from that pitching spot that week. Right. And that's the thing is like, if I had him in the NFBC more often, I'm, I'm, you know, the thing is, I'd probably draft him as a hitter. Yeah. Um, and then maybe I, 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 I reverse course on that on particularly good matchups. But like you said, right. huge chance for a zero because you can't swap the pitchers. You can only swap the hitters on the weekend. So yeah. like you said, if he has that pushback, well, then you're screwed. And you, you take so, a zero for the week. Yeah, I think that's the formula. You have to value him just as a hitter. Draft him that way. If you do that, he won't go as high as he's going and as you said if there's a week where he's got a wednesday against the tigers and you're like okay like i'd rather have him as a pitcher this week he's going in as a pitcher then that's fine and you just don't get the hitting stats that week that's right that's right yeah. san diego padres trent grisham it's going to begin the year on the il maybe out till the eighth is what they're saying now i drafted him in the main in the seventh round i think that was a little bit of a discount i also got him in labor with you uh in that league and i think i got him in the sixth i want to say uh fifth or sixth i was in the I guess I can look actually pull that up, but uh, you know, it, it was, uh, you know, in that league, you know, it was first of all, way earlier before the injury. So it's a little bit different, but uh, you know, I, I, I think that that was, uh, you know, I, I went in eyes wide open knowing, okay, he's probably, you know, in the main, wow. I, I took, I took him in the fourth in labor. Uh, so okay. maybe slight overdraft maybe, but who knows? Yeah. It, was, it was early February. I was young and impressionable then. And now, now I'm a grizzled veteran. Uh, is that enough of a discount to set seventh round in a 15 teamer or did, would you have needed more of a discount? So I took him in the seventh round on Sunday night in a 15 teamer. Okay. Um, and I'm okay with it. I, I was pretty much expecting an IL stint, but a short one. Mm -hmm. The IL stint that we get here might be a little longer than, I anticipated, but that being said, like, I think the bigger question with Christian, like I can handle it 10 days, two weeks, whatever. If, right. if he's the guy who got, I believe 10 homers and 10 steals last year, if he can be that guy this season, uh, I'll wait two weeks for a seventh round pick who could potentially be like a 25, a 25, 25 guy across the full season. I'm not expecting that to happen. If he could be a 20, 20 guy, that would be really nice from a seventh round pick with the scarcity of steals right now. Yeah. So I think seventh round is totally good. Okay, good. I feel better again. Yay. Good. So we got that going for us there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Looking at the Padres roster, though, I mean, it, they're kind of, you know, they, they've got multiple redundancies. That's one of the things that's nice about their roster is that we are talking about this is a team that needs to have a, a DH. However, among their redundancies, center field is not really one of them. I mean, they could push Tommy Pham over. over. They could put Jerks and Profar in center. Jerks and Profar is having a really tough spring, uh, but – you know, they could put him there. If you look at what he's done, Profar is five for 45 this spring. Uh, he has walked a bunch, 10 walks. So there is that, but nary an extra base hit, hit to be found. And in Arizona, it's hard. You, you just, you know, get hit slapped in the face with extra base hits, basically. It's such a nice hitting environment yet. Not for him. Yeah, I do think that he'll be the guy, though, mostly until Grisham comes back. That'd be my guess is that mm -hmm. Profar, I don't think they'll take too much into spring stats with him. I think he'll mostly be the guy. Now, whether you want him active on a fantasy roster, not really. I don't think I want him active on a mixed league roster for now. Yeah. Uh, I guess if I was dealing if I was dealing with an injury, then sure. Um, you know, like, like you got to do what you got to do. If I was had Grisham and I needed a replacement, I guess I could give him a shot. But I think he'll mostly be the guy. We do know that that lineup's deep, like you said, and maybe there's some other things they could try, but I, I think they'll mostly take, they, they'll take Profar, put him in the outfield till Grisham gets back. Um, and then that leaves second base for Jake Cronenworth. And then that gets Hossie and Kim, maybe some starts in the infield just to kind of start off his major league career, maybe gets him a few starts at second without Profar being in the, in part of that platoon. Yeah. Cronenworth's going to play a lot though. I think so. He's yeah. the better hitter. Uh, he's been raking this spring. He's the guy that the better stat cast numbers, 
Uh, and just the way you can see the lineups. He's always batting ahead of those guys. He's been batting in the meat of the order, actually, a lot for the Padres so far this spring. So I, I've, I've, I I really wanted to get back on the Cronenworth train. Got sniped uh, by him by one pick in the, my last draft, which was unfortunate. But, uh, yeah, he, he's he's very interesting to me. Uh, but again, Padres have a lot, little bit of depth. It's starting, but it's getting tested right now. Nola is going to begin the year on the IL. Uh, so is Grisham. So is Denelson Lamette. We knew that already. Uh, bullpen wise, Austin Adams, Pierce Johnson, Matt Strom all beginning the year on the IL. And then, uh, Jose Castillo is out for the year. Javi Guerra's out. Uh, Wingartner's hurt. I mean, Alta Villa's hurt. They've got, they've got some stuff and they haven't named a closer yeah. yet. I'm still hoping it's Pagan. It could be Melanson or uh, Pomerantz too. Yeah, Pomerantz has pitched well, actually, in a couple of innings since coming back from that little layoff. Um, Adrian Morjan, in positive Padre news, Adrian Morjan's getting a chance now to be in the rotation. Interesting young pitcher. Uh, because did they these send injuries, down Gore? I think they did, yes, yes. Yes, I'm near positive they did. So, yeah. and Morjan, I think they've named him their, I think they've named him their fifth starter for now. And Chris, another uh, Padre who's had a terrible spring, uh, Chris Paddock has had a really tough spring coming off a tough season. Yeah. I have zero Chris Paddock. I have him ranked fairly competitively, but didn't end up with him in any leagues. And I'm feeling right now I'm feeling okay about that. I got him in a draft champions early and I have him as a keeper in two leagues. Okay. And that's the tough part is, I mean, he's a, he's kind of one of the cornerstone keepers cause he was in so cheap, yeah. you know, uh, can't give up on him quickly. I'm just hoping mm-hmm. he figures out whatever is bothering me. You know, the thing, first three starts for him were good. And he just got bombed in his last two. And yeah. it's not looking good. Eight eight K, seven walks in eleven innings. That's the part that bothers me. He's he's not getting the mm-hmm. swing and miss. Mm-hmm. I think he's I would be oh, I would not use him out of I think I could not use him out of the gate. Uh let's just a quick look here on his first start. Looks like it will be against the Diamondbacks. That's, That's not, not such bad. a bad start. I don't I don't, uh, so it's, it's a in long the half lineup week. though. Yeah. It's not as long this year at all. Yeah, Actually, no. it is definitely the it is it is a short lineup this year, yeah. I would say, especially right now with Cole Calhoun out. Um, it's in the short week, right? It's this Sunday. It's hard to find, say, six starting pitchers for the for this mostly three games for right. most teams, a few fours. Um, so I might risk it in that one. That would be his. That would be the the full length of his leash. So if if that one's like three and two thirds, five runs, then he's on my bench for for the next one, no matter who it's against. Right. Okay. Yeah. But I I don't know about you, but I'm I'm finding I'm setting lineups, and I'm finding for some teams like I just can't get my labor team. I don't even know if I have six pitchers for some. Most of my teams I drafted late, I was able to get nine pitchers, but who are all pitching this weekend? Yeah. But it's hard to get nine. It's hard to get nine. I. So. And as a matter of fact, I have I, I, I have that problem in my one of my two mains. I just don't have enough guys going this week. In fact, I made a pickup. Uh, I picked up JT Brubaker because he's pay- facing the Cubs in week one. I just need to have like a sixth starter for the week, six pitcher. Because I have a lot of guys. Like I have Oda Rizzi, who's not starting for a couple of weeks. I have Price, who's yep. not starting at all. Yeah. Spoiler alert, that's my next. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I've got, and I think I've got a couple other stashes that, I, you know, well, I, I'm going to have to do some turnover. I, my la- I already, uh, I dropped the wrong guy. I dropped Goodwin. I sh- should have dropped Gore, uh, Mackenzie Gore. But And I right. have Pearson there hanging around. David Peterson is starting in week two, but he's and same yeah. with Griffin Canning. So I have a lot of week two starters. I'm going to have tons of starts next week, just this week. Eh, probably could have structured that a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I, for the late drafts, it's it's a good idea to around, maybe around round 25, to do a count in between picks of how many pitchers you have on your roster that you can use for this Thursday to Sunday. And if it's not nine, then you make a point of getting a pitcher or two that are either have a start or at least just a, like a Chad green type, like just grab a reliever. You can use to maybe get, hopefully you get maybe two innings out of them or something like that. And then right. you can drop them on Sunday. So I think for the past drafts, like my labor team just got decimated with injuries to pitchers, Gallon, Valdez, right. and the end more. And then, Josh Lindblom lost his rotation spot and everything. And then I just have some pitchers who just are slotted in for Monday. Like I'll have a ton of two-start pitchers, but I don't have – for the draft you did a long time ago, there's just only so much you can do. I made six pickups in labor. Six. Oh, I was close. I think I made – I didn't spend a lot of money, but I made four. I guess yeah. I made four. Yeah. Carlos Rodon, David Bote, who I'm kind of grabbing everywhere right now. Um, yeah, got the starting a, job. 
yeah i, I was kind of i had gra I, he was a, a target for me in tout and then i was uh and then I was picking him up in some leagues or drafting him late in some leagues, multi-position. His numbers are pretty good. Like if you just look at his career numbers and assumed 150 games, I know he's not going to do that. Nico Horner is going to come up at some point and be the second baseman probably. Mm -hmm. But for now, he's starting second baseman. He has some power. He can steal the odd base. So I think he's interesting. Yeah, I think so too. Like as a late round guy, like I said, second and third. So then that second and third is a really nice one, right? Because you get middle and corner. So. Yeah, so, right. anyways, yeah, I grabbed him in labor. I grabbed Carlos Rodon, and I can't. I grabbed a couple other guys. I, I got Hoffman it in front of me. You grabbed uh, uh, Adrian Morejon and Kyle Crick. Oh, there you go. There you go. So, yeah. So Morejon looking for the two start week coming up, and Kyle Crick on my hunch that he could be the putter or he could be the Pirates closer. Yeah, there you go. So I picked yeah. up Dalton Jeffries. I picked up uh, Ian Kennedy. I picked up Josh Rojas. You know, I, I, and you spent like to get those guys. You had to. Kennedy and Rod, Rojas were nine apiece. All the others were yeah. five or cheaper. Uh, Michael Waka for three. Uh, picked up Mac, uh, Francisco Mejia for two. Uh, it was one too much. No one else bid on him, but that's okay. Uh, and then I think I got Johnny Cueto also for a buck. Uh, okay. Just That's a lot of movement. But I had like Josh Fleming and a lot of my end games, and I had to drop him. Had to drop Davey Garcia. He lost a job. I, lo I dropped Tanner Houck, and now it looks like he may start after all, but had already been sent down. Now he looks like he may be back up because Erod's not going to be ready to go. I had a, I had a lot of drops to do. Uh, Sam Huff was my catcher, so I needed another catcher. Um, yeah, it was just a lot of dropping yeah. going on there. Yeah, and, and the labor decisions are tough because we have that one hundred dollars and no zero dollar bids. Right. So, like, like, like people might be listening in here, like, oh, nine, nine, that's not so bad on your, you know, bidding nine even out of a hundred. But when you have the no zero dollar bids, like you can run out. And anyway. while there's trading in the league, there's no trading of fab dollars either. That's right. Which I've never That's understood, right. it, but it is the rule, so you got to know it. Yeah, yeah, everyone's got to know it. And, I, and we have seen guys before do like a one for four, you know, late in the middle of the season because they're just like, I'm out of fab and I've got injuries. So here yeah. we go, guys. Like Fernando Tatis is available for like two pitchers and two hitters who are all decent. Yeah, that's right. That kind of thing. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sixto Sanchez, optioned out. This was not a surprise. He didn't throw that many innings, six point six and two thirds innings in spring training. Uh, they they alluded to the fact that there's going to be some innings management with him. He's going to miss the first two starts, but it will probably be up after that. Yeah, so I think nothing's changed. I noticed his ADP's gone down a little bit the last few days. That doesn't really make any sense. Like we always knew Sixto was going to be limited on his innings this year. Mm -hmm. I actually think if you draft him, this is kind of good because at least you know there's some li there's limit here at the beginning. So you can plan, you can use that now. You can try to grab whoever you want to grab. And but where I would be annoyed with Sis, with Sixto is if these are scattered throughout the season and some weeks they're announced on a Wednesday and he's already in your lineup and you have to take a zero. So right. if they could limit him a little bit here and maybe now he gets in and they let him get on a good run, uh, you know I'm fine with that. So oh yeah. we skipped. Wait we we moved past. I wanted to ask you David Price. Yeah 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 that's right. What are you doing? Dropping I'm holding him? for now. I, I mean, yeah. first week is Coors Field, first of all. So, you know, it, it, although he wasn't slated to start, he was going to be the piss starter. They, again, you know, and I think I got the inning, that fit fact about six and two thirds. It wasn't six, though. It was Price that threw six and two thirds this spring. Six, though, actually threw a little bit more. Okay. But, uh, I'm holding on for now. I have another drop waiting for me in Gore. Uh, so we'll see about that. Uh, but... Yeah, and maybe I'll, I'll probably drop Pearson before I drop Price too. But I'm, I'm holding on to Gonsolin and Price. And I'm going to use Gonsolin on certain weeks. I know that because I, I think he's going to throw more innings than your basic reliever and he's get gets you the strikeouts. He could he can vulture some wins. Price, who knows? I mean, he's thrown... We, we don't know what his form is now. And that that's going to be the yeah. tricky part. He is, He's not unfamiliar with relieving. He's done it with the Red Sox. He did it way back with the Rays when he first broke in. It's not like he's like, this is foreign territory for him, but yeah, it certainly hurts him a lot. Oh yeah, ab absolutely. And at first I was shocked with, I was shocked at first that they were even consider. like, I just assumed he would go right back into that rotation. Right. But then the more I thought about it, I thought, you know what? I, I don't think there's any hard feelings towards him opting out of last season. Everybody no. could make their own decision. That being said, the Dodgers have a super deep pitching staff. They just won the World Series. 
some guys who are he's competing with contributed heavily to winning the World Series, even with his big contract and long resume. I think it was fair for the team to say, hey, you've been off for basically, you know, over you last pitched a major league game a year and a half ago. And, you know, we'll see what you got in spring training. And right. it, it might be Dustin May. It might be Tony Gonsolin. Usually they just go to the veteran. The, vet, the veteran with the big contract gets the rotation spot. But I thought I in high I think it's kind of cool the Dodgers were like and again I don't think it's a hard, it's not a punishment for no. having skipped last year but when when he sat out he opened the door for these other people to That's right. be in the rotation and sh- and show their stuff without him showing his and they so will he get back I think he'll get starts this year but And I think I, May I, might I, not I'm start whole, all year long either also but It's possible. Yeah. I but, I'm I'm I have him in one league I'm going to hold him for a couple of weeks and see how he's used and then go yeah. from there. Yeah. I, I, I feel like that's the right call. By the way, I think it was the right decision. May was great this spring. And right. he's obviously, he's got so much good stuff. I think mm-hmm. the Dodgers made this enlightened choice. Say the best player gets the job and so mm-hmm. be it. Uh, and price was late to even get innings in too. That's the other thing. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah. yeah, I, I think it's, I, I'm, it's, re- it's refreshing. Like, like for is. all the spring training battles that you feel are quote battles but have been predetermined that the prospects going down and the other guys right. getting the spot or whatever like this it's refreshing that they actually let these guys show it show their stuff and then pick the one who did the best so the thing about may is is he going to go six innings in a start is he going to be one of those guys where they piggyback gonsolin or price onto him as a back end mm-hmm. that's the, the other reason why you hold on to price by the way is if he gets yep. he gets the ryan yarbrough treatment perhaps on a great team which means you're going to get great chance to steal some yep. wins it, it's totally possible. Arias could could have some short starts too. Yep. Uh, Clayton Kershaw has plenty of short starts nowadays. Like that's yep. something people people always talk about his back, but beyond the back, like he has more five inning starts than he used to. Where someone yep. like Price could come in after that or Gonsolin and pitch pitch two innings or something like that. So, I mean, as long as those other guys are getting to five, the Dodgers have such a good lineup mm-hmm. that they can get you the lead. Uh, with Yarbrough, like he was getting to follow guys who were throwing two. And then that that was really nice. That other guy throws yeah. two. You throw like Yarbrough throws three or four. It what? sets him up like so well to get the win because the other guy wasn't even eligible. I really want him to go three or four and then jump yes. in. Now that that's idea. Yes. Four is perfect because that's more time for that Dodgers offense to get going. Totally four for Arias, and then Price comes in for two or three, and then Price gets the win. And it's yeah. not fair, and it's basically a baseball scoring error. But whatever, mm-hmm. we'll take it. I'm more inclined to hold on to Gonsolin than Price right now. Yep, I think me too. Yeah, I think there's, there's a, well, there's a better chance that Price just isn't, there's a chance that Price just isn't good anymore. He, I don't think that's true, but there's, there's a chance that Price just isn't good anymore. Yeah, I kind of wish I had more of May, though. I mean, I, I well, not, obviously. And I, I know what you mean. But yeah. I, Gonsolin was a target on Saturday. I knew he didn't have the job right now, and he's still, I was still like, I want to get him. Mm-hmm. And this right. is probably the round that I have to take him. And maybe I, I acted rashly, because round 15, you're, as you alluded earlier, that's an area where there's plenty of talent that you're giving mm-hmm. up something uh, with that. So, uh, yeah, uh, um, and, and, and like I gave up, like I could have had Corey Kluber. I could have had May that round. I could have had Leota Tavares. All those guys have mm-hmm. pretty useful you know, talent there. And they're not just situational based. They're evergreen talent guys. Uh, so I gave up a lot for in taking Gonsolin. Maybe too soon. We'll see. As, as most, as they say in most bad college entrance exa- ent- essays, only time will tell, but uh, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> right. uh, and with that bad joke, let's give it another read here, and then uh, we'll get, keep going. All the news and notes. It's a news and notes podcast here today, kind of inter- splicing in our uh, main event analysis here and there too. Baseball has always been America's pastime, but a close second is horse racing, and we've got the best way to get in on the action. Stable Duel brings a new way to play the races against your friends. Similar to what we know in fantasy football and fantasy baseball, you select your team or your stable of horses and compete against other stables for big money prizes. Watch your stable move up the leaderboard as your horses accumulate points based on where they finish the race. The app is free to download and they offer free games so you, don't ha- so you can learn how to play at zero risk. Don't know anything about horse racing? Don't worry. The app has all you need to know with free data on each horse's record as well as a risk number, speed number, and value number for your best selections. This is the first game of its kind in horse in horse racing, and you don't want to miss out. Download the Stable Duel app now and get in on the game. Play, race, win with Stable Duel. I'm Jeff Erickson, here with Fred Zinke. We are talking all sorts of news and notes right now. 
Uh, George Springer had a follow-up MRI, you know, on his grade two oblique strain. Great. In my experience, grade two oblique strains are not 10 day affairs. They're usually three to four week affairs. I'm not surprised that opening day is at risk for him. Yeah, I'd be shocked if he avoids the IL. I think he'll be on the IL, whether it's, I know they can backdate it, whether it's a week, whether it's two weeks, but I, th I think he'll be on the IL. I think it's very comparable to Grisham. I think maybe Springer will beat Grisham back, but I, I think it'll probably be like decently close. The Jays probably have a little more incentive. I think mm -hmm. maybe they're a little, like they really want to get Springer in the lineup. But that being said, they got a long-term investment in him. So, you know, and, and they expect to be in the race. So I guess they, so I don't think they'll push him back. But yeah, I think he, he's going to, I dry, I did not get him. I would have been fine with him in round five the last couple of days. I didn't quite get him in there, mm -hmm. uh, but I budgeted in. We talked about that last week. I took off a little bit of playing time. Yeah. And he went five ten in yours. He went six, like late six in ours. He went uh, six thirteen on Saturday, so that's that shows okay. you a little bit of the contrast. And to be honest, I, I that was a conscious decision. I, I could have easily taken him in round six. Instead, I took Kevin Biggio. I wanted to get a little bit more speed. Instead, I like that. yeah, uh, you know, and then of course I took Grisham. I took the other injury risk instead. So yay, Jeff, good job. Uh, but you know, it, so it goes. Uh, but the thing is. Yeah, I, I also have exposure to Springer in both my online championship leagues. I don't need any more of them. I have none, and I think I have none. And he would be one of my FOMO guys this year. I think he's going to have a really good year. I, like I'm not that, like I said, I'm not that deterred. Just that range where he was going once he dropped. Mm -hmm. Before he dropped round four, I was still looking for speed. And then once he dropped, because I was tabbing early closers, like you said, I could have taken him last night in round five, but I took Araldus Chapman. I would have liked Springer, but I don't regret that one. Um, in yours in round six, I would have thought strongly about it. But again, you wanted speed. Biggio's got that. Biggio has that really nice triple position eligibility. The second, third outfield's yeah. almost as good as it gets. So, um, yeah, you yeah, get, so, it, so you get really middle, get corner, second, third, and outfield. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, Biggio is one of my guys who people overreact so much to spring training batting orders. Everyone was loving. I felt like everyone's loving Biggio. Then they saw he was hitting like seventh now, and mm -hmm. then everyone was pushing him down. Come on. Okay, so now Springer's going to be out. Biggio's the automatic guy to hit somewhere higher in the lineup, whether he hits first or second or something. They seem to not want to move Bichette to third. Biggio probably hits first or second until Springer's back, then Springer's back, and then someone else will be hurt after that. Or if nobody's hurt, there'll be guys getting days off. And when Simeon gets a day off, Biggio will hit lead off, or when, or sorry, second. And when Springer gets a day, because Springer's still going to get days off even once yeah. he's healthy again. He, he always does. So I, I will guess that by the end of the season, uh, you know, Biggio is going to have like half or more of his plate appearances will come like in the first two spots in the lineup. So I hope you're right. I, I have think, a lot I of Biggio. I think people overreacted to that one. Yeah, which means they also overreacted to Grishik possibly losing time then. Yeah, yeah, prob probably. Yeah, I think That's so. That's true. Yeah. Carlos Carrasco, he's going to – he's throwing. He's going to miss time because that was a pretty severe uh, leg injury he su suffered. You got him, though, in the uh, in the main – what, 19th round is I think is what you you know, said? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you think that's – you thought that was a pretty good discount. You're pretty happy with that. I was. Yeah. I think, well, he was a four, he would have been a fourth rounder mm -hmm. had he been healthy. I think he would have snuck into the third round of a few mains just with pitching getting pushed up. He wouldn't have yeah. in mine, I don't think, but, um, but Corbin Burns was middle of the third round in mine. You know, Tyler Glass now is in the second. These guys were fourth rounders a month ago. So, um, Anyways, I think round 19, like if he misses the first month, six weeks of the season, I think is still worth it. It was a little bit of a main event risk taking, mm -hmm. trying to compete kind of move too. like, like if, if, since he's throwing, if he can get on the early end of that timetable and I just got a, if I can get a round four pitcher in round 19 and just have to eat a month of IL time and bench space, like, I think that's worth it. And maybe gives you that really, really good rotation in the main. So I felt like in that he was worth it. I think that's my only Carrasco share. So it wasn't like I was chasing him everywhere. I feel like we all struggled to value these injured players for drafts. I don't know if you feel that way too, but they sit in the draft queue, right? Like, because they're too high. Hi, hi. For every right? Carrasco like, having their own little house party there. That's right. Framber, Carrasco, Gallon, they're all sitting up in the draft queue. Every yeah. So then they almost become just like furniture after a while where they're just sitting there and nobody notices them because they've just been there forever. But then, but at some point they all make sense. Like I don't have to look at where we, where Gallon went, for example, but I think Carrasco will be back before Gallon. 
Gallon went in round 13. So I got Carrasco six rounds later. I don't think the skills gap is massive between the two. And I think I'll get Carrasco back sooner. And I got him six rounds later. So do we, do I, we have an official estimate on Gallon yet? Nope. I haven't no. seen it. I've been looking. I've been trying. Mm-hmm. And they're kind of just like, oh, yeah, he, he's on pace or whatever. They, they yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, we, we don't, I've been looking and looking and have not seen anything. So, uh, that, that's one of, it could be, you know, all the, I think we've seen people that, uh, that, that special, like do fantasy injury stuff and they've done their own estimates, but it's never been from the team. So that's right. Yeah. So I'll, I'll maybe, I felt a little safer chasing the hamstring than the guy with a fracture, stress fracture in his throwing arm. So, yeah. Even yeah. if it wasn't a cause by pitching, but yeah that's yeah that's no thing. i know yeah. yeah but 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 the, the big thing with carrasco that i think is in that news note is that he is throwing yeah so that's allowing him to stay stretched out a little bit so that maybe once the hamstrings better he can ramp up sooner whereas i'm assuming gallon can't throw or can't throw much for a while yeah i think that's probably right yeah. uh pittsburgh bullpen i know we we, we kind of strayed yeah. away from bullpens let's go back to it uh richard rodriguez has not had a good spring the 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 war, the the just the uh, the news on him hasn't been great. Where are you on him? Uh, are are you kind of of the uh, the mindset that he's the closer? He he was still kind of getting drafted as a closer. His price certainly got pushed down. I know you picked up Crick and uh, and Labor. Is it in in you know, David yeah. Bednar has got an eighteen to one K to walk this spring. Where are you on Pittsburgh? Yeah, I, I'm I'm interested in Crick. Like I grabbed him for I think two bucks in labor. I grabbed him for in the tout reserve rounds. I think it was um, with that NL only. I I think they'll committee the bullpen. I mean, if anyone can committee a bullpen right now, it's the Pirates. Yeah, like they're they're basically on a path towards finishing last or second last or something this year. They never wanted Rodriguez to be the closer. Like that was never it seemed in their plans and he hasn't done anything to change their minds. So I don't think he's a closer. Like maybe he gets some save chances, but I would be surprised if he gets their first four save chances or something. I I keep hearing beat reporters mention Crick. I think Bednar has been amazing in spring training. Amazing. But I mean, in his career, he has 17 and a third bad innings in the majors. Like he's like, there's nothing in his, I I just have a little trouble think like believing that they would take Bednar from, a guy with a 675 ERA and 17 career innings to closer. I feel like he's got to do something during the regular season first. It might take two um, weeks though. It might, it, not... it might, but it might, but that might be enough for Crick to get three save chances. And if mm-hmm. he nails them, then it's his job. Yeah. I think so you that's why right. I kind of like Crick is I just feel like if I was, if I was betting on who gets the first save chance, I'd bet on Crick. And we all know, I don't know if Crick's good enough to keep the job, but like we've seen plenty of relievers, Ian Kennedy a couple years ago, right? Like we've seen relievers who aren't really good hold jobs. And Crick's interesting. Like he had a good spring and yeah. he, his career was going along a little, like, okay. And then all of a sudden tailed off the last couple of years with his control. So yeah. yeah control we'll on the mound and control out of Zanger too. That's right. You got yeah. a fight with Ke- Keone Kayla and didn't he get in a skirmish with a coach too, or something like that? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. So we'll see like if he's matured, then yeah, maybe like like maybe he's the guy. I don't think any of them are worth a big investment, but no. Uh, so pirates, yeah. we're talking about the pirates closer here, but you know, yeah. hey, for a team that has two closers and one spec and Stephen Crichton, yeah, I'm, an, yeah. I'm he, you know, he he's at least worth an exploratory bid. We'll see about that. Yeah, uh, in, in a 12 team, I probably just skip the whole team, but in a 15, you've got to be interested. Yeah. Uh, so, well, let's stay with the pirates because you know that's our target audience right now. Kevin yeah. Newman, did you have you noticed what he did this spring? Uh, I think he had a pretty good spring. I I think you are underestimating how good it was. <laughs> I, I knew he had, I knew he was doing well this spring. I haven't kept up on him the last few days. Like he, I think he's put Eric Gonzalez mostly in the rearview mirror. Yeah, he won the job. He hit like yeah. seven hundred this spring. That's not bad. No, that that, that I like that. Um, My dad would ask him where the other three hundred went, but still, it's a really good average. Yeah. <laughs> what? No, Dad. What about you, Dad? Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's yeah he he's taken over the job, but at the same time, it looks like Adam Frazier is going to bat lead off. Uh, yeah. Any interest in either of those two guys? More interested probably in Newman. I'm not that interested in Frazier, no, although no. I think Fra- Frazier has the second and outfield eligibility. So since he's batting lead off, I could totally see in a 15. I have him in a couple 
one or two 15s. Mm -hmm. I could see him as a bench guy. He's hitting lead off, lots of plate appearances. His batting average is usually at least average, so he's not going to hurt you yeah. there. He should score a few runs. Like I, Because of the two positions, I could see someone holding him as a bench bat. But I don't. There's just not enough home run and steal potential there. Newman's a little different. He was interesting. He was going like round 13 or so last year. And now he's an coming afterthought. Off of, yeah. yeah. And now he's an afterthought. So I think he's an interesting guy to maybe grab, put on your bench even for a week in a mixed league and see what he looks like, you know, out of the gate. And if he can, keep, doesn't have to keep up the 700. If he could be half as good, that would be great. Yeah. He was actually drafted in my main, but or maybe picked yeah. up. I don't know. But at any rate, he, he's not available. So, okay. He's late steals too, right? Like if you yeah. grab him late and you've got him, like you can get a dozen steals out of him. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. So, okay. There's our Pirates talk for the day. Good. Done. Uh, Phillies talk. Center field. You know, so here's two, there's two teams that are contending teams, theoretically, where I look at their outfield and I'm like, this guy's really starting? And mm -hmm. it's the Phillies and the Cardinals. The Phillies, they optioned Odubel Herrera. Yeah. Uh, they sent down Scott Kingery, too. So it's now Adam Hazley and Roman Quinn sharing center field. The Cardinals, uh, with, with Harrison Bader hurt, I don't know who their third outfielder is. I put it out on Twitter yesterday and got like six different answers, which is great. Uh, <laughs> all that. authoritative, by the way. It, it was the best part about that. So got to love but I, Yeah. You know, I, I, I saw that. I saw someone say, like, it's Dean. And then someone else be like, it's Williams. Like, yeah. they both, like, are sitting in the clubhouse or something. Like, not even like a, I think it might be Dean. I'm not sure, though. Yeah. I think That's it's a Twitter. platoon, probably, is my guess. Yeah. But some people said, oh, Edmund will go out there and uh, it'll be, uh, you know, they'll go back to the yeah. good old days of Matt Carpenter. Second. Matt Carpenter. But they did tell Carpenter he wasn't starting. Could be John Nagowski. Yeah. Could be Edmundo Sosa. You never know. Or some prospect mm -hmm. that hasn't been called up. Maybe they think... Nolan Gorman can play second and they'll move Edmund out to the outfield again. I don't know. It's, it's wild, but the Cardinals they're projected for first place by a lot of people in the, uh, in L central. So yet they're going to have their, the year is 2037 and the Cardinals still have their hitters batting sixth, seventh and ninth. And Adam Wainwright still winning 15 games. It's going to be crazy, but uh, <laughs> Cardinal devil magic for you. One of these teams should probably call my Blue Jays and get Randall Gretchen. The Cardinals could have him back, or the Phillies could have him. He's he's much better, a much better hitter than what they're rolling out in center field right now. But <laughs> but Bader but Bader will be back. So the Cardinals are dealing with an injury. The the Phillies this is the cent this is center field. Unless Herrera, they think for some reason I don't know that they want to wait a bit and then bring him back up. I don't know. But I would say out of all those people, I don't want any of them on a mixed league team. Roman Quinn because he could steal so many bases. I guess you have to keep an eye on him, but I don't think in a 15-team mix, I would take any of those Cardinal center fielders, including Bader, or, well, like I could stash Bader in a labor, but in an NFBC, no way. Yeah, and was, same with all the Phillies. I was just going to say, Grandel Gritchick's much better than Bader, for that matter, too. That's uh, right, yeah. Uh, yeah. He'd be ideal. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'd like that. Uh, I'd like I'd like to have see that, get him some playing time. But then again... Teams get injuries, as you alluded to earlier when we were talking Kevin Vigio. It applies to Grichik for sure. Uh, he's going to get his. He's going to get 400 at bats somehow. Yep, totally. Yeah. I, I believe that. I just don't know if he'll get 500, but right. Which, but he'll have spurts. He will have spurts where he belongs in mixed mm -hmm. lead lineups yeah. for sure. That's true. Yep. That's true. Um, there's a lot of other new stuff, but it's all smaller potatoes. I wanted to get into yeah. your uh, most rostered and FOMO players, but we'll, we'll take a quick break so we can break this up into segments. We'll be right back. Please like our video and subscribe to Rotowire. Then go to rotowire.com slash pod for a free 10-day trial. 